Hello, and welcome to episode 22 of Charlotte Mecklenburg History with Dan Morrill. Today is Sunday, August 16th, 2020, and I am Dan's daughter, Mary Dana, and I am here with Dan through Zoom. And we are going to talk about our part two of the Piedmont and Northern Railway podcast. So, Dad, hey, good to see you. This is actually oh, it's so good to two. see everybody. I hope you're doing well. I hope everybody is happy. Yeah, this is the the second time we tried earlier, but we were having technical difficulties, so we're uh, starting part two. Yep, take two of part two. <laughs> part take two, part, <laughs> part two. two. Right, click the board. Let's go. Right, okay, Dad. I'll let you take it away. Well, I want to make a brief pitch. You know, I feel like I'm somebody with a tin cup. Um, you know, I'm, I'm an historian, obviously. I enjoy talking about yesterday, but I'm more interested in tomorrow in terms of how yesterday can enrich tomorrow. And, you know, I hear so many people say, oh, everything gets torn down in Charlotte. Well, the way you can really try to help prevent less destruction is give serious consideration folks in fact it would be so nice if you would show your appreciation for these podcasts by taking about two minutes and making a secure online annual membership donation beginning at 25 dollars at preservemech.org forward slash donate if you don't want to do that send us a check to Preserve Mecklenburg, 1031 South Caldwell Street, Suite 200, Charlotte, and C28203. It would mean a great deal to me, and I think it'd mean a great deal to the community. So try to do that, and I'm going to go ahead and get to it. You know, I want to just recap for a minute. You remember Dr. Walker Gill Wiley, the surgeon? who illustrates the point that boy South Carolinians have really made an important part in Charlotte history. Mm -hmm. He was one of them, very excellent surgeon who had a foot problem. He went to see James Buchanan. No, wait, Duke. I thought it was the, I thought it was James Buchanan Duke who had the foot problem. Yeah, he did. Did I say the other way <laughs> yeah, around? Yeah, yeah, and he my went to see Dr. Wiley. Up. I mixed up on my feet. You're on the wrong foot. You started off on the foot. wrong foot. Boy, that's true in more ways than one. But anyway, James Buchanan Duke asked Gil Wiley to come look at his foot. Gil Wiley said, I got this idea of building dams on the most damned river in America that will be the most damned river in America, Catawba River. James Buchanan Duke gave him the money. And they, of course, also turned to William States Lee, who was a brilliant electrical engineer. And they went to the job of building hydroelectric dams between um, North Carolina and South Carolina. And they were going to go from Maiden to um, Gamden and they were going to build all these dams to generate electric power to power cotton mills. That's what they were all about, trying to industrialize the South. So we talked about that last week, and we also went back to our old friend, Charles Christian Hook, that we have dealt with so many times, hadn't we, Mary Dinah? Absolutely. Very and important. Very important figure. architect, man of great, great influence in this community. And they got him to design all these very distinctive stations. And we also noted that they never really got it completed because Southern Railway used its political muscle to convince the Interstate Commerce Commission not to let them cross state lines. So they only built two parts, the North Carolina and the South Carolina part. Last week, we looked at the South Carolina part we identified four existing stations. There might be more, but these are the ones I know of, know about. The Piedmont, Piedmont Northern Railway Passenger Freight Depot in Greer, South Carolina. It's a very distinctive building. See the big area here, and then those that very characteristic 
um, gable roof, tile roof with those very distinctive uh, triangulated dormers as we see here also in the Piedmont Northern Railway Freight Depot in Anderson, South Carolina, the combined passenger freight station at Hodges. I couldn't get a very good picture of, but I got one. And then finally, the Piedmont Northern Passenger Freight Depot in Donald's and Mary Dana, you got affirmation that the old man isn't totally senile yet, that indeed uh, it is used for antique storage for an antique shop. Yeah, somebody commented on the YouTube video and, and well, said that's you were great. That, that's, that's just terrific. And by the way, Facebook is so wonderful. Here is the station that was used by the Piedmont Northern in Greenville, South Carolina which unfortunately has been destroyed. Somebody sent me that on Facebook, which was Great. wonderful. That was so and nice. today, today I'm going to talk about North Carolina and I'm going to give you really an opportunity to take a little tour and I'll show you a tour that we went on. And by the way, Charlotte, Uptown Charlotte used to have PNN material and buildings. This was their big freight yard in Charlotte, which is about where second base is at the baseball stadium. And this is the freight depot that was still there when I first got involved with preservation. And again, you can rec you even recognize it, don't you, Mary Diana? I do, logo yeah. architecture. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and it looks so much like the one that still stands in Anderson, South Carolina. But unfortunately, of course, it is gone now. But not everything is gone. You can go see the Thrift PNN Depot, okay? The Thrift PNN Depot is um, in the Paul Creek community. You know, that's where they store most of the petroleum that comes up through that pipeline that goes up, and, you know, all those tank trucks and everything else. Call the Thrift Pin In Station because it was located very close to the old historic Thrift Cotton Mill. Of course, all the cotton mills in Mecklenburg County are closed now, but nonetheless, it is uh, something that is worth uh, going to see, and it's something that's worth really undertaking. So there it is. Now. Here is how you get to the Thrift Depot. You go out Freedom Drive. And by the way, I showed before, a slide before, I'll show you here. Here is Freedom Drive, Highway 27. You come out Freedom Drive, turn here on Moore's Chapel Road, go down to Old Mount Holly, take the right, go up and you can pull right up in here to look at the station. So that's, that's how you get there. And I'm showing you just, there you go, Freedom Drive. Don't go over the bridge, take a left, go down uh, Morris Chapel Road. There it is, Mary Dana. There it is. I've Very seen distinctive. it. Very distinctive, PNN. Boy, you go down the road, woo, woo, another <laughs> PNN. Now, that was not its original location. I'll get specific about that in a minute. This is the station as it looked about. Mm, five years ago. It had once been a very, very proud station, but it was really in sad repair. And I, you know, this is a great preservation story because the Historic Landmarks Commission, which I was in the director of, really sort of kept this on the front burner. We went out and cleaned out brush. We went and actually boarded up windows but it was owned by CSX that took over the Piedmont Northern in 1969. They had no interest in the station whatsoever. But happily, this station, which once was so grand, remember that train I showed you coming out Franklin Boulevard in Gastonia? Remember yes. that, Mary Dana? Well, boom, here they'd come right to this particular station. And it had been a proud station, but it was really, as you see, in very beleaguered condition. But 
the rail division of the North Carolina Department of Transportation, which has really saved a lot of railroad stations in North Carolina. Mayor Dana, I know when you go to Disney World, which I don't have a great passion to do, but I mean, when you go to Disney World, you go down to Hamlet to get the train, don't you? I do. Well, you, you go to the old Hamlet Railroad Station. That's there, a right? beautiful station. Well, yes. the North Carolina Department of Transportation saved that building, too. And they, a great day came. Now, here's a video. Now, Mary Dan and I tried to do the video with sound, but it didn't do. But I'm going to run my mouth for a minute. It's going to be silent film. Um, because I was so excited. We can't embed... We're going to actually uh, embed this. We're going to send hyperlinks, right, Mary Dana? Yeah, I can hear it a little bit, but I'll, so, I'll put a link to it in the show notes. It was really a great day to go and see that. And you can see, by the way, that it was being moved by Wolf. We are also talking with them about the possibility to preserve Mecklenburg of moving the Mays House, the one over on East oh. Morehead Street, and it has to be moved. And these people, man, they know how to move buildings. Let me, let me tell you that. Now, look, there they are, bringing it over the track. See it? Yes. It's coming over the track. All these wheels are individually hydraulic. In other words, th this is extremely sophisticated equipment that they, this is a very heavy building. How far did they move it? Well, I was going to show you that. Oh, it's wonderful okay. how you anticipate. <laughs> now, here is, do you recognize it? I do. I Didn't I take that picture? I... You did, but doesn't it look exactly <laughs> like the one we saw in Donald's? It does. The only difference is that we took the Donald's picture from the other end. Remember, this is a combined freight and passenger station. Mm -hmm. Passenger station here, freight station back over here. Okay. Now, uh, this, by the way, is currently vacant. I know that the the long run idea is to resurrect the interurban line between Gastonia and Charlotte to go right over all those bridges that I'll show you in a minute. And that it will become a station again. Oh, and great. they're actually looking for a tenant for this particular building. And one of the things I'm thinking about, although I'd have to get approval and it might, is, is maybe Preserve Mecklenburg can help the state in, in finding a viable tenant for this building because the roof has been completely rebuilt. Exteriorly, it's in absolutely first-rate condition, but it does, does need to see somebody. Now, by the way, I want to point out one thing. See this bench along here? Mm -hmm. Well, that's where people that would go sit if they weren't to go, supposed to go into the waiting room to sit. And I think those were primarily black folks that sat mm -hmm. on that bench back in the days of segregation. Although I'm not sure of that. Maybe, maybe other people sat on it too, but that was a bench to wait for the train. But what a wonderful element of our history to see that station preserved. You know, to you know, just to go back a minute, to go from this when it we thought we were gonna lose it. I mean, and kudos to the state of North Carolina to go to go to the issue, you know, what happened? What happened? What happened? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm gonna hit something and if it goes off, we're cooked. But I'm hey, you, you need to go back to PowerPoint. There you go. There okay. we go. Okay, we're good. We're good. Okay, now. Now you ask where it was moved. I love the way you anticipate me, Dinah. That's right. See that blue air? I do. That's where the station originally was. Oh. When I showed you, when I showed you, and by the way, CSX was not going to allow that station to stay on their property and be preserved. Have you ever dealt with railroads? Personally, besides riding one, no. 
Well, you don't want to. Okay. Uh, they have lawyers on top of lawyers. They're stacked like cheesecake. But anyway, it was moved from here to here. So when you saw it coming through that intersection, going over that track, that's exactly where it went. So it had to be moved off of CSX's that's exactly property. Right. And, and the state had to buy the land to move it to. Okay. So, so the idea is that one day this will become an interurban line again. And then the station will serve the purpose that it was originally intended. So it didn't move very far. Didn't move very far. And that was the key. You know, everybody wants you to move a building. I bet I've had people be willing to give us a hundred billions for nothing, we'd move it. But it's really tough mm -hmm. because you deal with overhead power lines. And if you have to take something out on the road, forget it. <laughs> it gets to be very, very challenging. Now, that's the first stop on your tour. Okay. Didn't I tell you? Where, yes. Well, what you're going to do when you leave this tour, you've gone here. I took you out Freedom Drive. You went down. Uh, uh, turned right on Old Mount Holly Road after you went on Moore's Chapel Road, went up here in this lot, and you saw this station, right? Mm -hmm. All right, you're going to leave. You're going to go right up here. See, be, 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 be. I know my cursor isn't very big. You go up here, you'll come right to Highway 27 again. It's the next intersection. You just go up the road, cross the track, go up, take a left, stay on Highway 27. And that's going to take you to Mount Holly. Okay. okay. Now, here is the Piedmont Northern Railway Catawba River Bridge. It's impressive. It's impressive. And also, I'll notice, I'll, I'll show you an old picture. You see, originally, it had these brackets over the top for the electric lines. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the CSX track here. CSX has, a, there are two bridges. When you go over, when you cross the Catawba River on Highway 27, you'll be, here's 27 right here, see? Mm -hmm. Then the, the first bridge that you come to is the CSX bridge. And this is the PNN bridge here. Okay. Are they both still used? Uh, Mayor Dana, I don't know how much the PNN bridge is used. CSX is used all the time. I think so, but, but Mary Dana, Mary Dana. I won't hold you to it, it's fine. Do you but see maybe a someone white, does. Do you, do you see a white arrow? Yes. What's it pointing toward? You see uh, that little, uh, you a see hair little, studio? <laughs> the Edu, Edu. How do they get a name Edu? Is it a bird? I don't know. I don't Edu. know. I don't think there's a bird named Edu. Anyway, <laughs> when you come across, like I'm email. giving you your tour. All right? Giving you your tour. Okay. You're going to come down. You're going to look up here. And what are you going to see? <clears throat> Mary Dana, if you were driving down that road now that you have been properly educated, would you know that's a PNN station? I would. I would recognize it. I'd say, hey, there's a that's PNN right. station. That's right. Now, that's a PNN station. And you would also know one other thing. You would know it's a combined passenger freight mm -hmm. station, wouldn't you? Uh, because right. this looks, look at that bench. Right. That that's bench. the passenger part. That's right. And this is the freight part freight part mm -hmm. and it looks just like the one at thrift and it looks just like the one in uh, donald's and it looks just like the one in hodges and they were all who was the architect for all of them cc hook that's exactly right now you here by the way we went on a tour I, these are these are our good friends lg and diane walker that's my wife, my wonderful wife. My mother, Elena, that's right. And your mother. And we're standing right there in front of the Edu, <laughs> the Edu hair salon. No, the Mount Holly. And that's an adaptive reuse of the building, which is one of the best. And what we really need to yeah, do. Yeah, that's great. 
what we really need to do for the thrift station, you notice how they've taken the freight, the, the original freight door, mm -hmm. and they built these steps up to this platform, and then they put a glass entrance in. Yeah. So that's where the freight door was, right? That's the entrance so that's, to the salon? That's right. That's okay. right. Exactly. So that's adaptive reuse. Now, you know there's this little spur that goes down to Belmont, mm -hmm. okay? Now, you're going to have to find your own way to Belmont, but that's not hard. You just go and take a left at the main drag, and it'll take you right down to Belmont. And we're going to go to Belmont. Now, here's Belmont. This is downtown Belmont. You know this very well, Mary Diane. I used to live in Belmont. That's you right. used to live in Belmont. Mm -hmm. and, I, and by the way, this next, not the next video. I can't do that, but I'll, the second one, I'll definitely play some on, even though it's, and we'll stop with some. How am I doing time-wise? What I am? Uh, about 20 minutes. Oh, Jesus. Anyway, here's Main Street. <laughs> All right, Main Street. Now, I'm going to show you an historic photograph. Mary Dana, oh, do you see anything? I see a and n station. <laughs> Is that the p and n station? Yeah, but it does not look exactly like other ones I've seen. So. Now, by the way, this is not a depot. This is a terminal. A terminal is, is, is a building where the line ends. Oh. Because this right. is a spur, it's a terminal, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, here's an historic picture. And by the way, I can tell you these are all, one of, one of the nicknames for the PNN for some people was poor and needy. Okay. Because a lot of people that rode the pen in were mill workers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you know, when we talk about mill workers, I think this is an important fact for many people to recognize. A lot of people believe that textile mill towns were all over the place. They don't understand that the southern textile industry, there were a few places in Alabama. There were a few places in Georgia, but look at the absolute massive confrontation of mill villages in the two Carolinas. Mm -hmm. Now, part of this was due to the PNN. Part of it was due to the Southern Railroad. Part of it was due to CSX, but people don't realize this was a huge development in the 1880s, 1890s, early 1900s, certainly significantly uh, boosted by the electrification of the Catawba River and the Yadkin River too, which they also uh, uh, do work on. This was a tremendous concentration of mill villages. Now, you know, I was gonna play a video. This is what I, you know, I remember last time when I was talking about being in, you gave me a little bit of I thought you thought I was being somewhat insensitive by saying that these mill workers could hardly afford a banjo. Oh, well, I know they probably well, now, were not well paid. The, well, now here's the thing. Uh, you ever heard of Wilmer, Wilmer Wesley Watts? No. No. He only lived to be, well, 1897, 1943. I don't know what month he died, but let's give, let's say he lived to be 46 years old. Mm-hmm. Now, Wilmer Watts was a very interesting part of a larger country music. Well, I wouldn't call them country music. They were, they, they, they really wrote very, very uh, simple and played very simple songs to speak to the concerns of mill workers. Now, I, I, I quoted Tom Hanks. Kind of here. folk music? <laughs> no, no, it's string music. See, he played, he played the banjo, he played the auto harp, okay. he played the fiddle, he played the harmonica. Oh, wow. And he, he formed a group called the Lonely Eagles. And I was going to play you. In fact, the next thing is a recording where you can actually listen to, and we'll we'll put the hyperlink. I, I'll see. Yeah, in the show everybody. notes. I'll put it in the I, show I'll notes. I'll send it to people too, and you'll put it in notes so you yeah. can listen to. That's right. 
And you said you he, quoted Tom he, Hanchett. Do, uh, it Dr. says this was not commercial music. You know, a lot of you, when you listen to it, just say, ooh, ooh, that's scratchy. <laughs> no, because it's not in a soundproof studio. It's not high tech. First of all, he did all his recordings between 1927 and 1935 because he recorded for Paramount Records. And he did it part time, by the way. He was from Tabor City, North Carolina. He lived in Belmont and worked in the mill. He was a weaver. And he worked in that mill that's right up there, was up the street from where you lived in Belmont, the Chronicle mm -hmm. Mill. And he met other people who were musicians. And they, they, they wrote these songs. One of them that I was gonna play for you is called Walk Right in Belmont. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, it says here, Wilmer Watts, one of the unsung musicians featured in the new CD anthology, Gastonia Gallup. Watts was a mill worker who made records that are now prized by collectors. Hmm. And they are because they are very, very rare. And the, as Tom Hedges says, this was not commercial music. There's nothing slick about it. It's neighbors playing for neighbors. And one of the things I think that really got me to thinking about, and I'm really sorry that this Blooming Zoom thing won't let me record the sound. Yeah, well, uh, we couldn't figure out how to do it. We, we need to petition the Chinese. Well, I, Dad, well, it might be well, they, user well, they, error. They, they own Zoom. Yeah, but it might be that we don't know what we're doing. I well, So could, I'll have to do it, some more research it, it, on that. It but... could be, could be. You're, you're more <laughs> forgiving than I am. Anyway, <laughs> now here's a fellow named Marshall Wyatt. I don't think he's any, well, I know he's not. Marshall Wyatt. He's the one that put together this CD called Gastonia Gallup. And I know in 2009, he headed and that should be records, by the way, I misspelled it. Old Hat right. Records. Old Hat Records in Raleigh in 2009. But this is what he said. Cotton Mill songs tell stories and record lies, both the good sides and the bad sides. And I tell you, he, I'll click here. Now he was from he was from Tabor City, Wilmer Watts, and he played really on the side. You know, uh, after 1935, he doesn't record anymore because Paramount Records quit doing records. But he still played at churches and social gatherings, and I mean they're very much a part of Gaston County history. And he's buried in his hometown, Tabor City. You see this black arrow. Mm -hmm. Tabor City is in Columbus County. Okay, I, I didn't even know. By the way, was. this is interesting. About 4,000 people live in Tabor City. Mm -hmm. I looked at my zip code of 28207 in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. 10,000 people live in 28207. Oh. <laughs> and by the way, well, anyway, it's a small Eastern North Carolina town. And he's buried there. He went back to be buried there at the end of his life. Wilmer W. Watts. 1897, 1933, gone but not forgotten. I'm, I'm afraid to say that's not true. Here is, by the way, Tabor City. And you know, by the way, Midnight, Charlotte ain't North Carolina. Oh, I know that. Charlotte's in North Carolina. This is North Carolina. <laughs> I mean, this is small town, and churchy, and water tanks, and Railroad coming down. I mean, this is this is this is that's where he was from. Now here he is with his band, and see I could play that, but it ain't gonna play. But walk right in Belmont, Wilmer Watts, and the Lonely Eagles. That that's who's actually on that. Now I want to talk about mill workers because you know I got to think Wilmer Watts is really because let me tell you, Mary Dana, do you like cornbread? No. <laughs> Mary Dana, have you ever had cornbread? Oh, yes. Yes, I have co had cornbread. Well, let me tell you the things going back, going back to uh, Brother Watts, wait a minute, going back to, to the, the fellas. Yeah. 
Let me tell you the things he talks about today. He talks about what they eat. He said they always ate the same thing, cornbread, hard as a rock. <laughs> and he says coffee that was bitter as gall. And he said if you didn't like it, you weren't going to get nothing at all. Oh, geez, okay. He also talks a lot about the ding-dong. That means the bell that makes him have to get up in the morning. Hear the oh, ding-dong okay. at 6 a.m. in the morning. So his alarm clock. He also talks about the fact that you better walk right in Belmont because if you get in trouble, if you get in a fight, you get drunk, the cops are going to come get you and put you in jail. <laughs> and the only person, uh, here comes my woman. That's it. That's it. It's it's just it 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 is a clear reflection of what life in the mills was like. Now, Mayor Dana. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you a question. Okay. You lived in Belmont. I did. How long did you live in Belmont, Mayor Dana? Mm, about three, five, I don't know, four well, years? About four, well, four, four years. five years. How many, how many people did you see look dressed like that in Belmont? When you, uh, you know, I didn't see many people in overalls. I mean, really, did you see many people, did you see many people like that? No. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go back here and try to start this thing. Go back a little bit. Just let me go back. I'm gonna go back down here. I want to show you these people. How many people do you see walking around like that in Belmont when you live? Oh, wait a minute. I would really want to do this. Look at these ladies. You see these ladies? I did. Well, let's start it again. So I'm this is fight. a so this is a historical video of Belmont. The first sound film ever made in Belmont. It was made in the early 1930s. Huh. Let, 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 let me play a little bit here. I'm just gonna play. I want you to watch these women. There's a man. We saw him before. Let's look at him. Lots here of they animals. are. Look at them. Look, look at them. Look at them. Woo. You know that neighborhood you lived in? Yeah. That was right around where these oh. people are now. He's going to interview a bunch of the men here about their jobs. But now look at look look at these young girls. Look at these look at, look, look at these people. I mean, I tell you now, I'm we're gonna we're gonna do a we're gonna do a thing about we're gonna put a hyperlink. Watch that video. Okay. I mean, it's worth it's worth its way to go. Okay. Now there. Yeah, I didn't know it existed. There it is, the, 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 the terminal in, remember the difference between the terminal and the depot? Yes, because it's right, at the it end of right the line. There. So okay. is it, what is it now? Isn't it a museum now? Oh, you're so wonderful. You just, I mean, you just lead it up. You just <laughs> serve the badminton birdie up to it. <laughs> it's really the most successful adaptive reuse of any P&N station. Now notice there, you see, remember I showed you the emblem of the PNN before it had a spark mm -hmm. in the middle. Mm -hmm. bzz, bzz. Get right. That spark up there. All right. <laughs> this is my friend Diane Walker. The front part of it, which have, would have been the passenger part. Okay. Mm -hmm. Passenger part is a cycle shop. You know, Belmont's kind of gotten people don't wear over, it's gotten real yuppie over there. Yeah. And, you know, believe me, they ain't no mill worker going to go out riding their bicycle out there. <laughs> but, you know, it's a bicycle shop. Now, the rest of it, the, here's the, the back part is the freight part, right? Mm -hmm. And you can see a, a, an old railroad car up yeah. here. Train would come right up in here, see? Now, that is a bar and a restaurant. So you can go and have an evening in the post-COVID. This, this virus has, you know, basically put us all out of business. But it, it is by far and away the most upscale PNN station that we've got in Belmont. Mm -hmm. How are we doing time-wise? Oh, about 30. You've been talking about 35 minutes. Oh, now we're going to go across the... Remember, we saw that bridge before. Yes. In order to go to Gastonia, that's where we're going now. You're going to go up, get on Wilkinson Boulevard, take a left. 
you're going to go to Modena Street, M-O-D-E-N-A, and you're going to take a right. Okay. And, but, of course, if you went on the train, which you can't do now because they don't carry any passenger service, you would go over this bridge that I showed you before, which is the one over the South Fork River. Are you mm -hmm. with me? Yes. All right. Now, see that white arrow? I do. Now, you can't even hardly see the building here, but this is, this is Modena Street. Now, I am giving you a really fine introduction to PNN built environment because almost nobody knows about this building. Okay. Few people do, but not many. Government didn't know who it is. Oh. Now, what is, see, you would recognize this as a PNN building. I mean, if you know PNN building, it's not a station, it was a power station. This, they obviously had to generate oh. electricity to go into the wire. Mm -hmm. And that power had to be boosted. I mean, it traveled a certain amount of distance. It had to be boosted. And that's what this building was. It was it's now used simply as a sort of place to repair cars. Okay. You know, but look, the, but what's significant about this is even for the, the the sort of secondary buildings of the Piedmont Northern, they did indeed try to be architecturally sensitive. Now the only building that's left this one. Now this this is in the Hoskins neighborhood of Charlotte. It is almost impossible to get a shot of this building. I had to drive around and almost squiggle around to get a picture of this roof part. And this was not a hook design building, but I did want to show it to you. These are the Piedmont and Northern Railway Pinocchio shops. It's now used by CSX, but this is where they did the repair work on the cars. This is where they maintained the cars, serviced the cars, did the major repair work, did the big lifting that was done, if you will, for the Piedmont and Northern. So. Now, where is that one? Where are those shops? How do you get it's, to those? If you go out Roselle's Ferry Road through the Hoskins neighborhood, uh -huh. you 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 will go by the big CSX freight CSX freight yard, mm -hmm. which is there. That this is it, it. And if you look way in the back, you can see this building. Okay. It's almost impossible to go through. Go to. I went through a neighborhood in the rear and took this picture. That's about as good a picture as you can get of it. Mm -hmm. But that's the Pinocchio show. Well, Mary Diane. Are we, is that it? Well, I was, I was showing you, see, there it is. Do you recognize it? I recognize the logo. And, you know, and there's, there's Dr. Wiley. Dr. Wiley. And there's a bzz, 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 Yeah, bzz, well, I like the sound effect. Now, again, this is another video, which is a recent group, which is called the um, uh, Moonshine Holler. Two women, I've talked with these people. I haven't talked to them, I've emailed them. I really thought at one time I wanted to see if I could get them to come to Belmont to play Walk oh. Right in Belmont. Yeah. Paula Bradley and Darren Wallace is, and that's a, that's a more sophisticated, updated video of Walk Right in Belmont. And, and you know, it, it's, it's a terrific song because the lyrics speak to mill people and they, 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 they speak to what it was like. Now, how much time have I got left? Oh, you're about out of time. Well, I was going to talk about the, the Griffin, but well, I, let's talk about that next week. Let's talk about that next week. Yeah. And has it been interesting? I think so. It's been really interesting. And, you know, I, I, we talked about this earlier uh, with ourselves, but it was, it, it's interesting how people can be a tourist in their own town, especially right now when it's difficult to travel because of COVID, like you were talking about. And, you know, these are places that you can drive around and, and see just locally. Look, look what you can do. You can go and get your hair done at the Edu Hair Salon. Right. And you then go. And, 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 and look at bicycles in Belmont. You can get yourself a drink 
and you can have food in the restaurant. And that's especially going to be true when the COVID's over. And then hopefully we'll be able to get a good tenant for the Thrift Depot. We, we really need to work. Yeah, that. I, that would be good to see. You know, it's, uh, I was wondering and about And please, that. people, become a member of Preserve Mecklenburg. Yeah, It's thanks, a little right. over $2 a month. PreserveMec.org forward slash donate. And it, I'm really disappointed I couldn't play the songs because I was going to make it real special. But and we did our member meeting. Uh, we did our member meeting last Sunday. That was really nice that we yep. all got to get together. So we had a, we had a good turnout. And if you become yeah. a member, you're automatically invited, and you can. Mary Dan and I'll be there, and yep. we we'd love to talk with you. And please join. Right. And next week, thanks everybody for being here today with us. And um, next week we're going to talk about that Griffin, that story. So I'm interesting. Start talking about mid century modern architecture in Charlotte Mecklenburg. Okay. Well, that sounds great. So thanks again, everybody for, for being with us and thanks dad. And we'll see you all again next week. Bye. 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 <laughs>